Welcome to Review Every Vehicle by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every vehicle since some haven't had a video made about them in years and others, the information is simply too spread out to be helpful in making decisions. Remember, digital vehicles aren't imaginary, digital vehicles are imagine necessary. Every month we do a giveaway to give back to this wonderful community. This month's giveaway prize is going to be either an Anvil Terrapin or if we hit 6,500 human subscribers before CitizenCon, I will give away an Anvil Carrot. But we only have one more day, so make sure you get to it because we're almost there. So make sure you share the channel and tell your org mates to come and check us out. To enter the contest, make sure you subscribe to Billionaire Ninjas, leave a comment on at least one video, and like or dislike at least one video. Winners have two weeks to claim their prize. Members collectively have a 25% chance of winning just for being members. So if you're subscribed, consider hitting that join button. And if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. For the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. Today, we end our trip through the Tumbrel manufacturer. And the next vehicle is the Tumbrel Storm. And it has one variant. The pledge price for the Storm is $90 standalone, $80 warbond with 70 at concept, cost in game is 454 k The pledge price for the Storm AA, $100 standalone, $90 warbond was $90 at concept, cost in game is 476 k The Storm is time limited for real world purchase. The Storm is not available to rent in game. Let me start by saying I'm not the biggest fan of purchasing vehicles outside the game with only a few exceptions. So almost always I'm going to suggest buying these in game because they are so cheap, but I'm guessing in the future that will change. And I want these videos to still serve a purpose for people who don't think the same way I do. So I'll rate these as though they do have value as far as spending money. Precision engineered for unparalleled efficiency. The Tumbrel Storm's advanced armament ensures swift target acquisition and devastating firepower. Its unmatched speed outclasses traditional tanks, making the Storm an emblem of battlefield dominance in the evolving theater of modern warfare. Blitz overcrowded battlefields, take out threats from the air, and turn the tide of any conflict. The Tumbrel Storm. Say what? Avengers! Claymon! Sorry, what now? For measurements, the Storm has a length of 10.5 meters, beam of 7.5 meters, height of 3 meters. If I ranked vehicles from small to medium to large to extra large in Star Citizen, this would be an extra large. For crew, the Storm has a minimum crew of 1 and a maximum crew of 1. For SCU, the Storm can carry 0 SCU. The claim time for this vehicle is currently bugged as of 3.24.1, but should be about 9.5 minutes. The expedited claim time should be about 2 minutes, and the fee for expediting that claim time should be about 4,400 credits. For top speed, the Storm is 25 meters per second. For weapons, the Storm comes stock with one size 3 double barrel, driver controllable, bespoke laser repeater. The AA comes stock with a missile launcher that carries 64 size 1 infrared missiles and 16 size 2 infrared missiles. For hull HP, the Storm has 89,000 hull HP, which is 19th highest in the entire game, and that includes spaceships. For shields, the Storm all comes stock with the same shields, one pin civilian grade C bubble type shield with 750 HP and 126 for HP recovery per second. For vehicle parts, the Storm all have the same size parts. One extra small radar, one small computer, one extra small power plant, one extra small cooler, one extra small shield generator, and two small fuel tanks. For special features and amenities, the Storm has 990 micro SCU of stowage. My preferred loadout, keep everything stock except the missiles. Swap those for the Task Force electromagnetic missiles because your lock time is everything when you can't rotate your missile launcher. A quick shout out to my members, my first ninjas, Star Touch and Rob, my Hokage, Old Weed, my Joni Ninjas, Radium TX, Paling Tan, The Solid Exodus, Damon Danielson, Dark Wolf God, ETL and Spades, Sean Phillips, and Rage One. Then my Chunin Ninjas. Raygun 972, Walk on Your Side, Scorpio King 3, Soul Galaxia, Meat Salad, Praetorian, J Solus, Waterfox Studio, San Chimera, Rotten Treats, BMC, and Bears Junkie. Of course, thank you to all my other members from every level who are all listed at the end of the video. As always, membership is never required, but always appreciated. You help make this YouTube dream even more possible, so thank all of you. A special thanks also to my gifted subscribers. Now it's time to rate these vehicles. A rating I rate from one to 10. My one is only buy if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the vehicle. My 10 is if you have the money, these vehicles are almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game. A one doesn't mean the vehicles are useless or ugly and a 10 doesn't mean that the vehicles are perfect. Just remember, these are just our ratings. Please give us yours in the comments below. And we did 
the scythe out of order technically so that's not going to be our next vehicle we actually have to go back and do our backlog but we did it out of order because we covered it during the asperia where we did the glaive and it's kind of true because asperia does the remakes of those ships so anyway, it's okay when we did the alphabetical order thing, it was just so I didn't play favorites not to be obsessively strict about the order. But we do still have our backlog of three more vehicles to be done. We're almost there. My rating for this vehicle is of course going to be handed out based on which variant we're looking at, except this time it's the same score. The Storm is a seven. And the Storm AA is the same, a seven. Let's start with what I like about this vehicle. Well, the Tumble Storm is one of those attempts again by CIG to thread the needle and fill a hole in ground combat gameplay. And this does a really good job in two particular areas. It's speed, it is indeed faster than the Nova, and the amount of size one missiles this thing has is absolutely incredible. Not to mention the ability to fire eight volleys of eight missiles, one after the other. I also like the look of the Storm. It's a very cool looking tank, and that animation where it looks like the ship is kind of eating you is objectively cool to watch, but it doesn't just look cool, it's also pretty fun to drive around. These things also are much more maneuverable than the tank, as they are also meant to recon, so they can traverse large rocks in ways that no other vehicle can, including the tank and including the Ursas and the Tumbrel Cyclone. What players needed was something perfectly between the Ursa Rover and the Anvil Centurion, and they got the Storm for that. Players also needed something that fit between the Cyclone MT and the Anvil Ballista, and they got the Storm AA for that. This ship can fit into the Carrot quite nicely, and it fits into the Corsair, even if you have to kind of ram it in there a little bit. So why not a higher score then? Let's talk about the issues with this vehicle and how I would fix them. Well, first, let's talk about the biggest reason this ship isn't where it should be as far as the score. They made it too wide by about one meter, and from looking at what it contains, that was completely unnecessary. This thing is the widest vehicle in the game. It's wider than a ballista, wider than a centurion, and wider than the Nova tank. Why, CIG? This thing should be six meters wide, not 7.5 meters wide. Outside of that just making sense, the reason this is a fatal flaw is because it massively size limits what ships this can fit in. This would have been the perfect pairing for the Anvil Valkyrie, but it is quite literally inches from being able to fit. And that is an absolute tragedy because why would I want a smaller tank if I can't fit it in any smaller ships that it makes sense to fit into? I'm not deploying forces in combat from a Corsair or a Carrick. I mean, I can, but I'm not. And the Corsair isn't really an option because it gets stuck in there sometimes, and any other time, it damages the ship because it's not really supposed to fit. However, I can solve this issue for you, CIG. Make the top weapon retract by another foot so that it doesn't bang onto the top of the Corsair, and then allow the tracks to retract inward closer to the center. The same way you can allow a turret to retract downward, allow the tracks on the outside to retract inward. And then it fits into more ships, you wouldn't even have to rework the entire ship, and it's a very simple fix that adds at least two points to each of these scores. The second issue with the Storm is the weaponry. It's honestly too weak. If you're going to do a bespoke weapon, it needs to be unshakably perfect for its role. This should be a size 4 laser repeater, and more specifically, it should be the best size 4 laser repeater in the game since it's bespoke. It should have twice as much ammo in the capacitor as well. I mean, that would place it perfectly within the scheme. The size 5 of the Nova and the dual size 4s on the Ballista, then you would have the single size 4 on the Storm. The AA doesn't escape the weak weapon discussion either. They absolutely nailed it with the size 1 missiles. There, I have absolutely zero notes. But why do I only have 16 size 2 missiles? It should easily be 24. If you wanted to do 16, they should be size 3 missiles. I think either of those solutions would be acceptable, and if you wonder why, it's just to fit where the ship is supposed to be. At current patch, this is the only ship that can sustainably shoot missiles in an anti-air capacity towards fighters. Size 1 missiles are great for snubs and decent for small ships. Size 2 missiles are great for small ships and decent with snubs. But let's be honest, most people aren't really flying snubs that often. They are flying light and medium fighters. So 
I honestly would have preferred the 64 missiles to be the size 2 and have the 16 missiles, which should be 24, I would rather have those be the size 1. Honestly, if it didn't have any size 1 missiles and only had 64 size 2 missiles, I think that would be even more appropriate. But then there is the fact that you have to move the entire ship to move the missile launcher which for anti-air doesn't make a lot of sense because you lose fuel every time you do that and it's unwieldy when you have fast moving targets flying by and those are your primary target. So you basically have to choose missiles that have a very fast lock time or else you might miss the target. So that's a lot of numbers. Let me simplify. The problem is not enough mid-range firepower on both of these vehicles. The Storm needs at least, preferably, a single size 4. The Storm AA needs at least 24 size 2 missiles or 16 size 3 missiles. No other ship can fill that void because the Storm vehicles are the perfect size for this. The Ursa is too small, the Centurion and Ballista are too small. Well, besides the wideness, like I said, it does need to be able to shrink to about 6 meters width. My last issue is the Nova is just too darn good to purchase a Storm in its current configuration. Why would I get a Storm or Storm AA where I have to choose between a size 3 laser repeater and a missile loadout consisting of 64 size 1s and 16 size 2s when I can basically get both in a Nova where I have a dual size 2 turret and 24 size 2 missiles? Not to mention that size 5 ballistic cannon. Sure, I miss out on a bit of firepower on both, but I'm much better equipped to handle the wide variety of threats that will come. The storm would be better if you knew for sure that some light fighters and vehicles, Ursa size and smaller, are coming. And the Storm AA would be better if you knew some snub and light fighters were coming without any vehicles joining. But you won't know that. So if you bring the wrong one, you're cooked. So you'd have to bring both. Which brings me to my last issue, the price. If both of these were $70 each, I would be okay because then you could buy both at $140 to satisfy the issue I just stated and still be at the price of a ballista. Well, at concept, the cheapest you could get both of these for is $160 total. And at that price, I start to wonder why I'm not getting a tank with a few CCUs applied to drop it to about 85 or 90 and then grabbing a Cyclone MT, which doesn't have as many missiles, but definitely complements the Nova tank enough to not need a storm. Not to mention, it could fit along with any ship I take the Nova tank in. So the storm should be $70 for both. That brings me to why this vehicle is scored the way it is. The storm just doesn't make sense in a lot of ways because I want to give them both better scores, but every time I try, they give me another reason not to. I try to base it on value. They are too expensive. I try to base it on firepower. They are underpowered slightly or weirdly powered in the case of the AA. I gave points on toughness because it is indeed tough. I gave points on speed. I gave points on fulfilling a necessary role. I gave points on maneuverability. That just doesn't amount to much when I can't take the darn thing anywhere because it's too big. So who is the Storm for? Well, the Storm is for people who A, have a Carrick or a Corsair. B, don't have any ships that can hold a larger vehicle. The Storm AA is for the same people. Everyone else should be looking at either a Nova tank and Ballista and Centurion for heavy firepower or a Cyclone MT, Cyclone AA, and even waiting for the G12A for lighter firepower. I imagine using the Storm as a deterrent stationary turret at the four corners of my outposts and bases. Yes, it can move, but I still wouldn't move it that much. Even though the gun is undersized, it is still a threat. And if I'm rolling up in an Ursa or a Spartan, I'm thinking twice if I'm staring down the barrel of a storm. The Storm AA I imagine using mostly to ward off light fighters and would pair it with the Nova tank, Ballista, or Centurion rather than replacing either of those. I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want a vehicle, go buy it. We won't stop you, or even better, all vehicles can be earned in game once the game is released, and some you can purchase in game right now. These are just our ratings. When you spend, it's your money. My opinion, I think the AA is the one to get if you're going to get either of these, but you're better off getting the Tonk if you're going to spend the money. Both of these are earning game for me. All right, that is it for this one. Shout out to the members. Thanks for spending your time with us. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.